The MiG-23 ML is the absolute best $70 premium you can buy in War Thunder. It is one of only two or three premium packs that I would actually consider buying with my own money if I was looking to grind a tech tree. And better yet, if I was lucky enough to actually be in the market for a premium during the sales, this would be an auto pickup for me. At half off, the MiG-23 ML is a great deal and it is pretty much the only premium that I actually have that opinion on. Most of them, for 70 bucks, I really don't think it's worth it. You really don't get what you pay for. But basically, for 35 bucks, you have access to grinding the entire Russian tree, and unlike most of the other premium packs, the vehicle you're gonna be doing that with is actually good for its battle rating especially. But performance-wise, some of the key features of the 23ML is that it has fantastic thrust to weight. It is very fast plane. Once you get supersonic especially, it climbs up the Mach numbers very rapidly, and the acceleration is also pretty damn good. The only gripe I really have with it is just how weird it feels when the wings are fully swept back. The rolling is kind of weird, it definitely feels like it rolls mostly with its rudder, which is just kind of awkward, especially so for aiming the gun. And it has a little bit of drift, if that makes sense. If you make a maneuver, it tends to just kind of keep going the same velocity as you were before, but your nose is going to be pointed to where you want to be going. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. It just feels awkward, basically, is what I'm trying to say. With the wings fully swept back, but fully swept forward, it is a very good dogfighter. If you want to get this thing up close and personal, do some close range dogfighting, sure, sweep the wings forward to 0%, and you're going to have great energy retention. You have great thrust to weight to go with it, and you will probably be beating everything at this battle rating. Up tiers, obviously, not so much, but that pretty much goes for everything in the game. The good news, though, is that the top tier aircraft currently are going up to 12.7 battle rating, so you're not going to be seeing them for very much longer, and I think that's going to make these premium vehicles much more playable, much more enjoyable. You know, you won't be seeing planes like the Gripen or the Su-27 or F-16Cs, and hopefully if Kaijin has any sense about them, F-15s, although that's not yet how it is. The F-15 remains at 12.3 for some reason. Again, hopefully that changes, but nonetheless, this thing, when it's not getting fully up-tiered, is an extremely strong aircraft. It has the two ram sticks above the plane for countermeasures, so they are large caliber, and you do get a hefty amount of them, so especially relative to the battle rating, it's pretty good. Now, if you're defending against four AIM-9Ms, yes, they're gonna run out pretty quickly, but again, that just comes with the caveat of up tiers at top tier are not very enjoyable. The loadout is R60Ms, R24Rs, or R24Ts. You can make interesting combinations of both, but you can only carry two R24s at any given time. It's not the best loadout, but it is still very serviceable. The R24s especially are good at 11.3, it's definitely up there for loadouts. It doesn't get too much better than that. The only other big complaint that I really have about the 23ML is the RWR is absolutely awful. For most of the missiles that are gonna be fired at you, for radar guidance anyways, you're not gonna be getting an audible launch warning or even a visual launch warning. For that matter, it'll just be giving you a lock warning the entire time and you're gonna have to keep your eye out to see whether or not a radar is launched at you. Another bad thing about the RWR is that it's only four directions, so you're not going to know what's straight ahead of you at your 12 o'clock, directly behind you at your 6 o'clock, or know what is directly to your left and right at your 3 and 9 o'clock. This does mean that unless you visually see the radar missile closing in on you, it's going to be pretty hard to tell if you are at that perfect 90 degrees to notch the incoming missile, because it's only going to show up the entire quarter of your RWR, and you'll never really know when you're actually perpendicular. So the RWR is by no means useless, it's just not the greatest. However, the really cool thing about the MiG-23ML, and it's something that I do want to point out and spend a good amount of time talking about, is that your radar and radar missile set also makes most of your targets at this battle rating, well, their RWRs are not gonna be too helpful to them. For those who don't know, every single radar in the game and RWR is modeled to emit and detect certain bands of radar. And the MiG-23ML has a radar that just happens to emit J-band. And the problem with that for other planes is that their RWRs very often at this battle rating just simply cannot detect J-band. And so what this means is exactly what it sounds like. Most of your targets are not going to have any idea that you're locking on them, let alone shoot at them. In fact, here's a whole list of planes on screen that do not get any kind of RWR warning, audio or visual that your radar has locked onto them. And as you can see, that is a very sizable amount of the 10.3 to 11.3 battle rating bracket. There are some even higher battle rating vehicles up to 12.3 in there that also cannot detect your radar or radar launch in any way. 
and even if their radar can detect that you are locking onto them, there is another sizable of chunk of aircraft that can detect you, but they will not actually receive a launch warning for your R24R. And so here's a list of those on screen that will not get RWR when you actually fire the R24R. Now there is a special group of aircraft that can detect the launch, but they only give a light as in like a visual warning on the RWR that there is a missile in the air being guided at you. And that's kind of cool, I guess. Not really. It's better than nothing, but you're probably not going to be paying attention to it. And most people out there probably don't even know what it means. If an aircraft was not on one of these three lists, then that means that it is an aircraft at 10.3 to 12.3 battle rating that will actually be able to detect and warn the player that you are locking onto them and furthermore even when you launch a missile so that's going to be most of your 12.3 12.0 aircraft i want to take a minute to highlight my play style for the 23 ml for maybe people out there that have just bought it they don't really know what to do with it after the recent sale really the main thing is is that you just want to fly low as i said before you do not get audio launch warnings or visual launch warnings for that matter when aim 7m and f sparrows are fired at you and that's going to be most of the radar missiles that are firing at you in the form of f4s's and maybe F-14s, stuff like that. So if you're not going to be warned, you're probably not going to be dodging them. But if you fly really low to the ground like you see me doing on screen all game, they're just not going to hit you anyways because that's the way SAR missiles work in War Thunder. Aside from that, make sure that you are not leaving your team. It is very easy to start off with your team. In the beginning of the match, you know everybody goes left and then you kind of merge for the furball and then you just come so fixated on all these potential targets that you kind of lose track of where your team is uh, because you're so focused on looking for targets and where the enemy team is. It is very quick and very easy to be caught out in the open all by yourself. Next thing you know, the entire enemy team is latching onto you and firing missiles at you, and there's just very little you're going to be doing about that. Even if you're paying attention, eventually somebody is going to find an angle that you're not looking at, or there's just an angle that you simply can't dodge, you run out of energy, whatever it may be. So if it feels like you're starting to get a lot of pressure, if it feels like you have two, three guys looking at you at one time, you should probably find some teammates. And you saw me do that in this very match. I was getting a little bit ahead of my team in the furball, and so I turned around and rejoined them and then re-engaged the enemies. Just some quick top tier advice again for 23ML players that just got this thing or new premium players in general. Top tier is all about distractions. You are going to be killing the enemy team based on whether or not they're actually paying attention to you. If they are paying attention to you, 9 out of 10 times they're going to go to the ground, your SAR isn't going to hit them, or they're simply just going to flare away your missile. Of course, going for guns is still an option, but really you don't want to be doing that very often at top tier because that means you're going to be very focused on one target, you're probably not going to be checking your surroundings as much, and it's also going to take you a lot of time. The furballs develop very quickly, your teammates die very quickly, or they kill the enemy team very quickly, and you want to be involved as, in as much of that fighting as possible. And if you're fixated on one guy trying to get a gun kill and not trying to put pressure on multiple different angles at once on the enemy team, you're not doing as much as you possibly can to help your team win. In fact, if you fire a missile at somebody and you find out that they're paying attention to you, more than likely you're probably not going to get them with the second missile. Just go to somebody else, join another fight, try to help another teammate out, and see if they're paying attention to you. And it's just pretty much the only skill you're going to be developing at top tier that you actually need to win on a regular basis is trying to figure out when a player is paying attention to you or not. And it's really not that easy to tell because you really have no idea what they're looking at technically, but you'll be able to start picking up on behaviors and just different mannerisms that the enemy team's gonna be doing that's gonna cue you that they're probably not paying attention and that is the time to launch your missile. Likewise, you need to be paying attention as much as possible in order to not die. And that pretty much means spam your C key or your free look camera, whatever that keybind is for you. And even if you're focusing somebody down, even if you're trying to take missile shots, in between shooting and watching the missile fly to the target, look around. You really don't have to watch the missile fly all the way in. Either it hits the target or it doesn't, and that's not going to change whether or not you're actually watching it fly there or not. So make sure you're checking your surroundings constantly throughout the entire match. Don't put yourself in too hot of an area. Make sure you have some teammates around you at all times, again, because the game is about distractions. If you're not getting any distractions, then that means they're all looking at you and you're just not going to be killing anybody because they're looking at you. And that also means that you're probably not going to see one of them at some point in there and they will kill you. So in summary, the MiG-23 ML is again one of the only premiums that I would actually buy with my own money if I was going to grind this tech tree. 
Obviously, if you're not interested in the Russian tech tree, let's say you want to grind the US tech tree, buying the MiG-23 ML is not going to help you, even if it is the best premium in the game. So definitely make sure you're picking out the end of the line plane, like where do you want to end up first before you buy a premium? because it's not going to do you any good if you want to play the F-15, but you decide to buy the ML because it's the best premium in the game. More than likely, you're only going to play several hundred matches in any of the premiums and then never touch them again once you get to the actual top tier tech tree planes. So that's pretty much it for the MiG-23 ML. If it's on sale especially, I think it's a good buy, but even not, it again, it is pretty much the only plane I would actually buy for that price tag. It still would hurt, I still don't really agree with it, but at least it is somewhat worth it in my opinion. Bonus clip, that was 200 rounds hitting an F-111 and him not dying, even though I used ballistics computers, so that was pretty funny. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you.